evening Facebook. I'm sorry we're a few minutes late. I'll um, just give you a couple of moments to uh, tap into our Let's Talk About Ice every Thursday night at 7pm Queensland time on Australian Anti-Ice Campaign Facebook page. So if you're out there and you've just tapped in, give us a holler, say hello. Um, we're here to talk about ice tonight as the show's name is Let's Talk About Ice. All in the name of education and awareness and in hope of prevention. Um, so if we can share our stories, uh, perhaps people out there can learn from our experiences and not have to actually go through that. Um, and, and also to give families um, hope that uh, their loved ones can recover like we have as well. And, and to, I guess, share the journey and um, the experience and what helped us may help other families out there. We do this show, guys, for education, for prevention, um, but also to outreach uh, to communities out there and people who may feel alone at this time. They may have a loved one entrapped in addiction and um, not know what to do. We do have family support. We do have clinical counsellors. We do have people who have recovered from addiction that are trained to come and, and help um, in this situation. So we're doing this as an outreach. Uh, we're asking you to share this show. Uh, you don't know who out there is silently suffering and doesn't reach out and doesn't know what to do. Um, and we want to be that point of call where they can send us a message or an email and we may be able to, to help them um, on their journey into recovery or the family's journey into getting some tools that they can help their loved ones um, step perhaps step into recovery. Um, so we are very, very blessed at AARC um, to be doing the work that we do, being able to utilise, um, you know, what, we, what tried to destroy us, being able to utilise that to help other people um, all around Australia and New Zealand. So we do have a team there in New Zealand of about 20 people at the moment. New Zealand, we are planning on coming out there uh, later in the year and we do want to implement um, some workshop programs that we do here in, in Australia and uh, we look forward to working with you um, in your community. Uh, we're not coming there claiming to, to have all the answers, but we would like to integrate and share what we, we do here and, um, and to help your communities as well. So we are the Australian Anti-Ice Campaign and we are live streaming from our offices here on the Gold Coast and we're here to talk about ice. So please share this post and if you're out there, say hello. Hello everybody. Um, tonight we are really privileged to have an amazing individual, an amazing woman, an amazing woman of God too, um, who has been through addiction and um, she has managed to escape the entrapment um, that was set before her and she's agreed to come on the show um, to share her journey in hope that it can help somebody else out there. Um, we have Esther on the show. Esther, hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for agreeing to, um, to share um, on tonight's show. Really grateful for that. Um, welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed. Esther's one of our amazing presenters here on the Gold Coast in Queensland. And um, we really honour her and, and we, you know, we love having her as part of our family. So Another big part of the family. <laughs> She's amazing. She's about out there every day helping people um, create pathways into recovery and just shining her light everywhere she goes. So we've had another chance, a second chance at life and we're taking Definitely. it for what it is, hey? Yeah. So Esther, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened? I mean, you're a beautiful looking woman and oh, thank you. everything going <laughs> for you in life and what happened? Um, life, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it just started from when I was young. Um, I just dabbled in drugs when I was quite young. Um, started pretty early because I um, actually did homeschooling. So I came from like a Christian background, did homeschooling. Um, my parents divorced and like there was abuse in my childhood. And basically from there, I think probably as early as maybe 11 or 12, I started taking ecstasy. Mm -hmm. um, most weekends a recreational drug at that stage and then it just progressed on and on and on like uh, I obviously had a whole lot of deep-seated issues that I wasn't dealing with mm -hmm. and a lot of peer pressure a lot of older people so I jumped a couple of grades in school because I did homeschooling mm -hmm. so I was hanging out with people a couple of years older than me um, and it just 
it seems okay. Like, it's something to have fun with. Like, I wasn't touching any of the hard drugs, you know. Mm. Every drug is obviously a hard drug, but in my head, that's the justification at the time. Mm. Um, yeah, and it just kept going. I, I did manage to finish school, which was good, but that was literally due to my dad, like... You know, honing in, I got sent to boarding school because I was having trouble here, there and everywhere. And by that stage, I was pretty much doing pills every weekend. And, like, I think back on it now, and, like, I have a seven-year-old daughter. Mm. So in five years, she, like, that was me doing pills. Yeah. Like, that actually baffles my brain now. Now it's getting younger. Yeah. So I'm, like, like, it actually legitimately freaks me out because yeah. in my head, I was old back then. Yeah. Like, I had an old mentality in my in my head and so for me, I was like, oh, you know, nobody understands. I'm an, I'm an old soul or whatever you want to call it. And to me now that, like, I'm 26 now, to, that, to think back on it and to think that my daughter won't be but could have been doing, like, ecstasy in five years, like, that's crazy. And then obviously it just kept going. So probably um, I started doing speed when I left school, um, eating it, doing, doing all that sort of stuff, and it was when I... Um, started a relationship when I was 17. I just turned 18, had had my 18th birthday, and yeah, I just remember not being able to get the drugs that I was used to. I couldn't get um, edible speed, and I couldn't get, we couldn't get ecstasy, and like I'm sure we could have, if that makes sense. But it was yeah. just, it was the, it was the one time. It was the gateway. It was yeah. the one time that I said yes, well, you know. Yeah. And literally, I remember it like so vividly because I knew, like some people don't know whatever, and I didn't know about the drug per se but I had a feeling like I knew mm -hmm. that if I did this that in some sort of way there would be no going back if that makes sense wow yeah it's really weird but see all oh, our story obviously involves God yeah, yeah. Um, and he never left me like no matter where I was mm -hmm. so for me I really feel like that was God going hey like come on don't go there yeah yeah, yeah. and it was the it the, the the only time the first time that you did it and 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 it just took over your life like um, wow that's amazing so other drugs um i guess what what esther has experienced with with which is what most people experience mm. other drugs create a doorway mm. to other drugs Huge. and um what they don't know out there today esther is that um you know maybe not in the time that you were using other drugs but today they are lacing marijuana with ice yeah. and they're cutting um, party pills with ice yes. and they don't people out there don't you know the youth don't realize that this um you know you take it once and you you very quickly have yeah. a raging ice habit yeah. you know that takes control of you, of your body of your brain and of your of your soul yeah you know? and that doesn't surprise me in the slightest pure and simply because my brain when i was doing pills i was like oh okay so the ads that are on tv and i'm not saying that they were bad or anything like that. I just don't think that they honed in on the actual person, what they're going through. Like, oh, if you take this once, you're going to die. I like talking about the pills. Yeah. So for me, I was like, well, I didn't die. Yeah. So I'm okay. Like, they're lying to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. And back then, even, they were lacing it with speed and stuff like that. So I, I have no trouble believing that now they do that. Yeah. Because weed isn't just weed anymore. No, Like, that's it's right. not an outdoor plant that's grown in the sun and all natural. Yeah. Like, yeah. you've got the hydroponic... Like, you've got yeah. so many chemicals... It's ridiculous. And excess of weed in itself, I mean, long term has oh. has consequences. Anything that we put, you know, into our bodies have has consequences, yeah. whether it's positive or negative. And, I still deal with the know. consequences. So, hundred percent, it does. There you go. But yeah. you know, even if you like, if you eat too much chocolate, you know, you're going to put on weight. Yeah. You're going to get pimples. You're going to get bad skin. I know that story. <laughs> that is a consequence. You yeah. know what I mean? So we're talking about, you know, weed, um, ecstasy pills. Yeah. Uh, it, they all have negative consequences. Yeah. If you put good stuff in your body, they have positive consequences. Yeah. But you know, we've got to look at the, um, you know, ice specifically. Yeah. Which I mean, we're talking about ice tonight. Yeah. Um, it's a drug that you know, it, it hijacks the frontal lobe of your brain and breaks down your neurological pathways. Yeah. And it, it starts to eat away at your organs because you know you've got chemicals. I mean, you can tell tell yeah. the audience out there. Yeah. You, you do some of the education, some chemicals in there that you would have what? That's the crazy thing, though, Andrea. Like, until I actually came to work here, and I was in ICE from 18 till about 23, 24, and, like, I had a partner that used to cook ICE, um, and, yeah, like, I was around every form of it, like, bikies, the whole nine yards, and I never knew what was in it. Yeah. So I literally had no idea. Yeah. And, yeah, for me, it definitely did take over. Like, you talk about the other drugs there, for sure they were the gateway, but nothing took over like this did. Like, this was... The other ones were, like, the lead-up. It's like, oh, this little doorway, this little doorway, this yeah. little doorway. Oh, well, I need something harder and heavier. 
so I may as well go with this, yeah. you know? And yeah, it wrecked everything. Like my family, my job, my friends, my education, because I was in, enrolled to do study at the time. Mm. Like I have two children, I'm, I deal with consequences from their lives now yeah. because for me when you're in it like you you know when you're in it it's it's a, it's a whole entire other world yeah. you don't actually live in this world no. like you live in an actual ice world like it's, it's like world. this man-made yeah. like thing it's yeah. crazy it's funny you say that because i don't think you've heard me say it. i call it ice world Do you? <laughs> it's that's ice world and now that i've come out of ice world you know yeah it's kind of a different a realm of existence that's exactly right everything else disappeared yeah and, but because you also don't have the frontal lobe um operational where yeah. you make logic rational decisions yeah. um you know and time doesn't exist in that world yeah. there is no time no. uh you you know you're capable of where you that's why people make illogical yeah. and irrational decisions but it's logical to you yeah, like in your brain that, that everybody really else is crazy yeah. and i'm like on this amazing journey of life yeah. until like it, you, I think on some tiny remote island level you're like something's going on but there's no yes, part of you that can right. ever like grasp it like at that time you can't grasp going back like to go back would mean so much pain so much detox so much body pain mental pain everything so you're like no way yeah. I would rather stay here like in this bubble in this ice world it is and, if, and I don't know about you but you get like little glimpses and when you're coming down of all the all the things that like you that is piled on top of oh. you like the debt and the, the people chasing you and the, oh no I haven't done this and I haven't oh no and you just pick up again yeah. because it's easier and you don't know how to deal with the you know the the consequences that you've, you know, it feels like a yeah. kind of, like a, a building falling on top of you and it's just easier to just have another pipe, yeah. just have another hit and all of that goes away. And know? it's doubling over and yeah. over and over again. It's yeah. funny that you say that because it's been a few years since I've been out, so it's been about three three years or a little bit more, I don't know exactly. Well no, done. Yeah, <laughs> thank okay. you. Congratulations. Um, it took me a little bit longer to get over the week because that to me was my anxiety thing, so I like to keep my brain functioning, it's such a lie, but anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me that that time, like, and what you're saying there about the the going forward and and mashing it all together, like, it absolutely loses everything, loses its value. And to it was literally this week that I was talking to somebody that's still that's just come out of it, and it's like God had given me a heart for it again because it had been so long. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I remember now. You're high, you're coming down, realizing what you would have to go through yeah. to get straight again, and to get straight to what to be the mediocre that I was beforehand. Yeah. Like that's why for me God was absolutely integral, but I know that it's love as well. Like it's yes. it's love and and continual support and not giving up. Because honestly, like if my family had given up, yeah. I I don't know if I would be here. I don't know where my children would be. I don't know what where I'd be. There's a lot of people out there that um they don't have family yeah. support. They don't have you know they have hurt their family so much that their family have have blocked them out. Yeah. Their friends have blocked them out. And um you know if we're speaking to you out there and you are that person that we're talking to, um you know we've been there yeah. and we're here to to be your family to be your help. Yeah. yeah. So we're really urging you to reach out. Um if you are in addiction and you're contemplating change, we want to help yeah. you because that's what we do. We've been on the other side. We don't want you to go to hell. We don't want you to, you know, be in a mental institution yeah. for life or dead. We yeah. want you to, you know, reach out, send us a message either on Facebook or on our webpage. Um, and that's what we do. Apart from education and awareness, we uh, buddy up with people. Like Esther yeah. just said, you know, she was helping a girl today. Um, because when you're first coming out, you're not thinking for yourself. Everything seems so bad and so big, and so much things you have to deal with that it's it's you know it's scary and it's yeah. it's depressing and it's you know I remember the, so depressing, the, oh, the overwhelming. Oh. It's like literally blackness like sits on you twenty four seven. Yeah, and you're clawing like your way to the top. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? And I was blessed with having a buddy. Yeah, you know, a buddy, and I had an amazing family that you know surrounded me and helped me, but not everybody has that so we're here but i love that, that idea andrea like about the buddy like today was obviously my first one yeah. but like i actually really like it like for not not necessarily like you know everybody has their different parts that they like or whatever but i think for me i like the fact that it's like for a trigger for me back then was i understand yeah. right yeah like I'm not trying to be rude or go over the top here, but I would have punched you straight in the face if you told me you understand and you had never picked up a pipe before. You had never um, done any of the things that I did while in addiction because I did yeah. some horrendous things, you know. So if you hadn't walked that out and you told me that you understand, 
actually, no, you're a hypocrite and I'm probably gonna like smile and like nod at you, but I'm about to go and get high again because you're a freak. <laughs> but you just, you, exactly <laughs> right. You know, I actually got to experience that because I went to an AOD council where I first kind of landed, yeah. you know, um, and uh, you know, a friend of mine said, you have to go and see a drug and alcohol counselor. That's an AOD counselor. And so uh, here I am in this room and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm, and I'm tweaking and I'm nervous and I'm like, you know, what are they gonna do with me, you know? And I was so scared. They're gonna know that my brain is fried. Like, no, like, they're gonna know, like, like, you know, they're gonna lock me up yeah. in a message because I can see people yeah. and I can see things and, you know, there's voices in my head, you know, yeah. so I'm scared as anything. And um, and this lady is telling, you know, with a pen and a paper and she's she was lovely. Oh. And she's telling me, you know, Andrea, you shouldn't be thinking that. And I said, excuse me, have you ever been like yeah. me? Have you ever, do you know what I'm going through? Yeah. And um, she said, well, no, but I've studied it. And I stood up and I said, well, how, and I did, I swore, how in the hell would you know what I'm going through? Yeah. And I walked out. And at that point, right at that point, I was in risk of yeah. relapsing. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it's demotivating. Yeah, yeah, it is because yeah. you don't know what yeah. I'm going through. And it's, it's almost condescending, here. isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah. you shouldn't be thinking that. Cool. Tell my brain to do something yeah. different then, because yeah. I'm here and want change, but it's still doing its thing. From like, honestly, I cannot say enough good stuff about the good stuff. Such good English, but I cannot say enough. Good things about the the presentation that you guys do because I actually learnt so much about the brain, the hardwiring, the receptors, everything. Yeah, yeah. It actually validated me yeah. as a person to go, oh my gosh, wow, yeah. that's what I went through. Yeah. That's what they're going through. It's not some airy fairy like, oh, I don't feel good today or whatever. No, like your brain can't actually give you any good endorphins because it's got nothing left. That's right, that's right. And you can love that person back to life yeah. with an understanding of what is actually going on physically yeah. as well as emotionally um, and, and spiritually yeah. because we are three-part being and we believe in a, th in a holistic uh, approach to recovery. So you just don't go into rehab and fix the body. Yeah. You, just, you know, you, you got, you've got your mind, you've got your soul, you know, and you've got your spirit as well. Exactly so right. all of that needs to be repaired. And apart from, the, you know, the person that that's been in traction addiction that's getting the therapy, we highly encourage families out there to also um, tap into our family support services to get yeah. some counselling for themselves because it does, you know, addiction oh. breaks down not only the individual using, but, um, you know, it breaks down the whole family unit it really and it destroys relationships, you know, yeah. and we want to, um, to help both sides and, and, you know, bring the love back into that family yeah. unit and, and community, you know, so... We do encourage families out there uh, to tap into our family support. Our family support number directly is 0481 844 or you can call us at head office at 075665 6063. How's that hippocampus? I'm remembering. <laughs> uh, we have something called in our brain called a hippo. Like, I'm like, really? This is our trainer, right? Yeah, um, I'm like, I don't even know this. Tell it's me. It's a hippocampus, yeah. right? And what it is, it, it goes to the front of the brain, you process something, it goes to the back, and it grabs all the all the memory and file and, yep. you know, process the logic. And I'm like, I have a hippo in my brain. It took me ages. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you know work too good. I go, come on, hippo. <laughs> Are you there? My girl. <laughs> but, you know, five years down the track, um, it's a, and I, I don't know about you, but I'm still, I still have memory issues with yeah. stuff that I don't remember from the past, from my life, um, that it's still appearing and it does. Oh, it's 100%. getting better every day. But how, how, yeah. you know, how are you finding that recovery? Um, oh, do you know what? It's funny because I would have said, if you would have said to me last year, um, how's it going? I'd be like, oh, fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. It's actually been probably in the last six months that things have like come up. So mm -hmm. for example, like um, weight loss was huge for me. Mm -hmm. So even at the end when I didn't want to be doing it anymore, I still did it because I didn't want to get fat. Yeah. So I that was like, huge I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. And it's ridiculous because, okay, let me explain because now I know mm -hmm. and I actually am suffering the consequences of this. So you're starving your body. So your body's actually going into starvation mode, which long term is actually going to screw you. Yes. Like, yes. I'm talking actually screw you. It does it the opposite. Yes. Way. You actually start to put on all this weight and you go, what yeah. is going on? Yeah, legit. I, I was talking to a, a health advisor literally yesterday because I was having I was having full emotional like problems yesterday because I was 88 kilos. I, I, I healthily I dropped down to um, 60 kilos so I lost 28 kilos like through gym exercise healthy eating everything wow. and then over the probably last six months I put on 10 kilos again and I was like all of a sudden 
it was like it triggered something again. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it made me remember. So it's like your metabolism actually changes from all the starvation that it went through. Yeah. So now I'm actually having to go on this program, like this this holistic health program, basically yeah. to restart yeah. my meta metabolism. Wow. And this is nearly three years later. Wow. And wow. then like you've got my weight, you've got my brain. Like I, I literally finished grade 12 when I was 15. So I was is whatever quite smart like yeah. i didn't i'm not i was you know not a dumb yeah, person no, you know person, yeah and that like honestly yeah. i it has taken me like years to actually like i used to be the best at spelling like i'm talking like the best i'd be able to spell anything like that and now like i literally use word like auto check but what happens esther is that you know your neurological pathways in your brain break down yeah yeah I mean, apart from the dopamine, what's happening with the dopamine? So you have your transporters, your receptors. You know, dopamine, guys, it, it, dopamine makes you feel happy and good. Yeah. And when something, you know, beautiful happens in your life, your dopamine spurts out, you know. And the very first time you take ice, your dopamine floods yeah. your, your brain. Um, but what also happens is that your receptors and your transporters start to get blocked and break down. That process of repair is that takes about 12 to 18 months for the dopamine supply to stabilize. Plus you have your serotonin being depleted. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on in your brain that takes a long time to repair. Um, so, you know, your, your process and everything's starting to rebalance. That's just your brain. But, you know, your body then, you, you know, your organs that you put chemicals like Drano and acetone into, um, you know, that's what I'm, the chemicals that we've... And over and over again, uh, like day wow. after day after day. That's what, like, baffles my brain. Like, there's no way I would go... Like the chemicals you show me, there's no way I go and be like, yeah, Keen, anybody want to have a little bit of this? You know? Yeah. There's yeah. no way. Yet now, oh, yeah, it, it genuinely does baffle my brain to think that, and this is why I do love, like, the Andy Ice campaign so much because to me, I didn't know. Like, I was yeah. not dumb. I, I was know. educated. Yep. I was, so were you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not like I was, you know, off with no education, yeah. no, the, yeah. like, homeless starting this, that, whatever. I was well to do I was this I was all the all the things that you wouldn't expect for an ice addict you know like so I think yeah I totally agree and, and going back even to the family l literally today um the the way I got in contact with this lady was actually her mum like she saw um the Facebook live or, or you on tv and contacted here and she actually then gave her daughter's number with her permission obviously mm -hmm. to then contact me because she has had to cut off all her friends all her everything yeah. and I think that's where I wouldn't have thought about the family aspect beforehand, yep. but now, even going back and talking to m some of my family now, and even my ex's mum, like they have to go through some horrendous yep. stuff. And in our brain, like we look good, yep. we're feeling good. Yep. Yep. Like I'm a tall girl and I got down to 47 kilos. Wow. Yeah, but in my head, yeah. I looked schmick. Yep. Like I was so good. And now yeah. I think about it and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's insane. Like yeah. that's... That's sickly. That's sickly. But you know what else can happen from uh, from that um, on the other extreme? Yeah. I've met with people that um, their thyroid gland has actually um, stopped working yeah. and they've gone the other way. Yeah. So instead of losing weight. So what's happening out there is that girls are getting off of this drug, um, you know, in various forms to lose weight. Okay, so they're, um, they're going, oh, have a great time on the weekend and lose four kilos. Wow. You know, and straight away girls want to look like what they see on the magazine and they want to look fantastic and they want to have a great time they don't realize what is about to happen but um you know the thyroid gland can yeah. just trip and uh, stop working and then they actually put on all this weight yeah and you know i've known That's people that have put like 80 kilos yeah. on you know and they're, they're still on the journey years later yeah. to lose it it's just horrendous you know and then that that idea of relapsing in that time like that actually is what really breaks my heart because it's like you're sad in this time like you don't want to be doing anything and um yeah you don't want to be doing anything you don't want to be even thinking about not doing it or whatever so for me i just think the i don't know i just think the idea it's it's deception isn't it yeah absolutely. so straight up deception because absolutely. it's like okay i lost four kilos let's stop it for a week i'll put on five yeah so actually you lied to me i actually put on a kilo yeah. from taking us like that's cheers right. thanks like thanks for the false endorsement yeah. there buddy but that's what it is it is a false yeah. it is you know it's the lion in the sheep's clothing yes. you know and it, and it looks innocent you know yeah. you get this you know we, we go into the schools and um, you know into communities and talk about this and do a workshop you know this ice pipe doesn't come with um, a label on it saying ingredients yeah. and side effects um, and it's a very classy 
yeah. glass pipe with a few crystals in there. You just take a puff and have a bit of a smoke and yeah. pass it around. And yeah. it, you know, it's it looks so innocent. It's yeah. not like a heavy drug or anything. Yeah. You know, and that is the deception. And it's like we're all coming around doing it together, and it's all good. Like yeah. that is literally the first time. After that, it's all yeah, creepiness and right. garages and late night whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I I have not. A hatred for the people but I have a hatred for the drug now yeah. like yeah. I literally think that it comes straight from hell yeah, because yeah. it rips everything that you could have ever had apart it does. but it is possible obviously to well, to get to the other side yes and, and we are living hope of that you know yeah. um, and we're here to help anybody that um, you know needs help out there uh, if you're entrapped in addiction um, and you're thinking about change um, please give us a call we want to help you um, and if you're a family member that has a loved one in addiction, uh, we would like to help you with some tools to be able to help your loved one, and then um, you know come in and come in at the right time to assist them into creating a pathway into recovery. Yeah. So, um, so Esther, tell us about you know obviously after that initial um, you know high wore off, um, what happened? Like how long were you in that entrapment, and um, how quickly? Did your life go out of control? See, if I if it would have been like even a little while ago before I went back in my head, I would have been like, oh, what's the slogan about? Yeah. I 100% agree with it, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. It was, it's like it's burnt into my brain yeah. that one time. Yeah. And I remember, I remember that, yep, something inside me going, don't do it. And literally that one time, and I, it's almost like, like I know that it was years, mm. but it's a foggy haze of years. Yeah. So I know that I was a little bit after 18, because um, I remember having my 18th birthday and I did all other drugs, but I didn't do that. So I know that it was just after that. Mm. Um, I know that my ex who was working at the time, I was studying, we lived in his mum's rental property. Like we were pretty, like for being 18 and he was 21, mm. like, we were pretty good, like both had good cars, good jobs, good everything, like we were fine, like doing extracurricular stuff, but nothing like this, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I couldn't even tell you, but it definitely, like we definitely did it again within that week for mm -hmm. sure, because it's like, oh why not, I can function. Yeah. I can yeah. go to school, I can go to work, I can go and do whatever, because I'm not like, excuse, like people that have done drugs will understand, like I'm not, it's not like pills where you're like smeagled on a couch yeah, and you yeah. can't do anything, yeah. you know, you're like, I'm okay, yeah, like yeah. I am, actually I'm amazing, like yeah. I'm going to blow work out of the water, I'm going to work for three days think. straight. But that's what we think, yeah. when you're on it, you, you think nobody else can see, yeah. and that you're awesome, and yeah. that you look fantastic, yeah. it's a deception. It's you think so you're in your ridiculous. own world, but other people outside, yeah. you know, and, and we know this now because yeah. we're out, um, you know, we say, oh, I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem, I'm yeah. great, my life's great. Other people on the outside see different. Yeah, that's you know, exactly right. We can't see it while you're entrapped in that world. Yeah. So I think, like, it, everything just files. It does. And you're not willing to admit it. It's everybody else's fault. So we stopped paying the rent at um, his mum's property. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I'm allowed to go into here, but I... Um, uh, Feel free. Yeah, I ended up falling pregnant, and um, I couldn't deal with that, so I ended up having an abortion, which made me then go further. Um, and just go crazy on the ice because to me the way I was raised you don't do that and I still I don't I believe that now but in that moment I'm like there's no way I can deal with me right now everything that's going on and a child and like I've been blessed enough to literally be able to have healing in that area like and my god's come in and kind of you know mm -hmm. even said you know I've got your kids and all the rest of it because it went further than that so I then fell pregnant and so this is over the space of probably a year um, I then fell pregnant again and I knew, like, I was like, I can't, I can't do this again. Like, it's almost like, okay, so your brain works on so many different levels when you're on yeah. the ice, doesn't it? Because yeah, it's yeah. like, you're still in there. Yeah, yeah. So in my head. Absolutely. I love how you put that. You're it's still true. in there. Yeah. Your loved one's still in there. Yeah. yeah? And so don't forget that person. Um, it, you know, a lot of families go, oh, but, you know, we don't want to know them anymore. That's not my son. No, But your son is in there. Yeah. And we just need to help it's you just be able to help, yeah, help yeah. them. Yeah, and they don't, they don't see it, but they do get, you do get glimpses, don't uh, you? Oi, yes, yeah, and that's straight up. Like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. But then it's like, look, very quickly you transition to pick up again. Oh, straight yeah. up, because it's like that emotion is what, whether people like to admit it or not, or not, and I'm not trying to be rude, it's some sort of a wound. Like you've started it from some sort of a wound, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, a relationship breakup, whether it's abuse, whether it's abortion, whether it's, um, I just don't, I don't know what my purpose is in life, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have some fun. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's mm -hmm. stemming from some sort of pain, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So, 
for me, it spirals over and over again. You're shoving dung mm. on top mm. of it mm. over and over again, and you didn't want to deal with that to start with. Mm. So why would I want to deal with all of this to get to this mm. to somehow maybe get better? So it was probably a space of a year. I had an abortion. Wasn't then using protection. Wasn't stopping ice. Wasn't anything. Like, was with... Um, the father of my kids, I was with him basically the whole time, apart from if we broke up because something happened and as you do the 57,000 ups and downs yeah. of a relationship because two people on ice together yeah. doesn't yeah. really work. No, no. So did, was there violence involved? Oh, in definitely. Yeah. It's it's really funny that you say that, Andrea, because it was just the other day. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm going through uh, mediation at the moment. Um, I have a good, like a, a working relationship with, with my ex, uh, the father of my children. Um, but they actually asked me, they were like, oh, you know, has there been any DV in your past? And I was like, oh, no, all of a sudden I was like, oh, wait, hang on there. And the thing is, and this is what I do want to say, he's not a violent person. No, that's right. And I'm not a violent person. Yeah. But when you're that, yeah. like, it was like this, like it was horrific. Maybe not as bad as like, you know, some other people or whatever, but it was definitely horrific. Yeah. Like, yeah. We would do things to each other. He would do things to me. Like even pregnant, not pregnant, like it didn't matter. Like yeah. you, you, you've lost. And I, and I don't like the cop out, but it's almost like you have lost control. But you have, um, you, you have lost control in a sense because the serotonin That's exactly right. uh, is is depleted, and yeah. so you know the, the anger, violence, uh, you know the emotional outburst um, trigger. It gets triggered really easy. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I remember driving home one time. And I remember words coming out of my mouth, right? And in my head, it's so funny that you said it, because in my head I was like, stop saying it, you're going to really annoy him. I can, like, we're both not in a good place. He's coming down like it's not going to be good. Yeah. And it kept dribbling out of my mouth over and over and over again. We were literally two streets away from home. We, like, just got home in time for him to, like, reef the front. Like, it was a horrific scene. Like, yeah, we yeah. had cops called to our house all the time, yeah, kind yeah. of a thing. And they, I never took out a DVO. They did. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was. It's like something else comes out. I couldn't yeah. stop myself from talking because it was like I was so low. Yeah. I had to get all these words out. I hated him. He had done this, he had done that, and they'd left me and all the rest of it. And he was like, stop talking. I can't, like, I can't yeah. even handle it. And it's an explosion. Yeah. And that's honestly, he, I would not be scared of him in a billion years yeah. now. Like, not even a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yet back then, I did. I was yeah. actually scared of him. Like, yeah. there was times where it just certainly wasn't fun. Yeah. I had to leave, um... Like, I left lots of times. Um, and that's probably the sad thing. I just I feel like I'm just going to say this for a second. Like, I realise now, and I'm not blaming him in any way, shape, or form. It's all my choice. Um, but because I loved him so much, I stayed in it for a lot longer, I think, than I would have. Yeah. Um, I went back over and over and over again. Yeah. And... And you think things are going to change. Yeah, yeah. because your heart yeah. wants it. Yeah. Yeah. You want the best for this person that you love. You've seen, for me, I saw him before. Yes. So we didn't start like that, yeah. you know. He yeah. was this, he was awesome. He's a kind, caring man. Yeah. Like, this thing uh, wasn't him. No. So I, oh, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, yeah. like, it's going to, and when he yeah. does, I do. And yeah. and as a girl, I don't know about you, yeah. Yeah. he's getting on it. I've got to get on it. That's right. I'm, pff, I'm exactly. not being left out. That's like, right. are you kidding me? Exactly. Like, I'm a strong woman. Like, I'm going to. I'm a strong woman, so I'm going to do ice. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Doesn't even make but sense. But anyway. But, you know, your story so much, um, resemb my story resembles so much what you're talking about. You yeah. Know, it was, and, and there's a lot of um, women out there and girls out there that will stay in that, um, you know, because you, at the end of the day, as though, you know, we do at life, we do life based on two things, um, either love or fear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're looking for love. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, when you're, in love with that person and you just you will do anything yeah. you know we, we even took it to the point of death yeah. you know and that is a sad thing because you don't uh, that's not how you get love that you can't yeah. go into somebody else's not love. drug world or, yeah. or ice world and uh, destroy yourself you know yeah. and that's not love and you, you it's going to ruin two people you know I even tried six months down the track being clean going back and saving the man that I love I always yeah, fell back straight back into the to yeah. it you know and it doesn't work you know you you know you have to both go into rehab you both have to do the work that's exactly and, right. and see what god yeah has actually in my opinion and this is just for my story yeah. i was actually enabling yes because i was coming back yeah. over and over and i don't actually have like sadness about that anymore but for some reason i have a bit of sadness in my heart for those girls now yes because i remember like going out and being maybe not fully clean but at least clean off ice yeah. And 
somehow getting sucked back in yeah. over and over and over again. And now I was getting sucked in with a child. Yeah. So, oh, wow. like, I... It's actually only been just recently that I've had to deal with repercussions of that. I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. My five-year-old um, hasn't had to go through the same stuff that my seven-year-old went through. Yeah. Um, my seven-year-old in the first couple of years definitely went through some stuff. And the other reason I've got tears now about it is because I actually see the repercussions of my actions then. And in my head then, because my sisters were helping me with her on weekends and stuff like that, so she wasn't seeing it too much and I would wait till she was out of the house. That goes out the window within a couple of months, you know? And um, I am probably one of the more blessed stories because I had good family, I had God, and I had, and I don't mean this in a rude way, but I had some sort of moral standing that I wouldn't let them smoke around her, I wouldn't let her be, like there was things that I would put into place because I was always, this sounds crazy, but it's the truth, I was always in charge. Like, yeah. even when it comes to like, bike people or whatever, I was the crazy psycho, like, you come in my house, this is how you act, this is rah, rah you know, because... On some level, I knew what I was in. Yeah. You know, yeah, like you have that motherly instinct. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you God helped you get out of that situation before it was too late because yeah. you can lose total. Some people yeah. lose total control. And, and I, yeah. I, I was around all of them. Like I would, yeah, go with my ex and, and deliver and do whatever. And yeah, it. It genuinely broke my heart, some of the things that I went into, like some of the places, like the houses. Yeah. And now I wouldn't be able to go in there and leave and just leave. Yeah. But because you're in that world as well, there's the other aspect of you can't be a dog and you can't ta can't talk down to people. That's right, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like, well, I would, like I'd bring the kids food or something like that, but that's all you can do. Yeah. You can't, like, you would never call child services, you would never call the police, you would never, yeah. you just don't do it. You just yeah. hope, yeah. hope that they're yeah. okay. That's yeah. pretty much it, you know? Yeah. So I left um, him when Shaya was a couple of months old. So I stayed clean um, during my pregnancy because my sister scared me so much. Mm -hmm. She. What did your sister say? <laughs> it's it's truth, but mm -hmm. she went a bit like hardcore on me. Um, Good on your sister if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, she will be. She told me that if I breastfed my child on me that my milk would be green. Um, she told me that, um, she didn't say it so much like this, but this is how my brain accepted it. Yes, yes. She said that if I did, kept doing drugs while I was pregnant, that, like, they could be deformed and this and that and whatever. She's not wrong. I know. Mm -hmm. And to me, do you know that I remember for eight, seven, nine, whatever months to when I found out, because I remember finding out, oh, it was horrific, man. Mm -hmm. I remember finding out that I was pregnant, I found out off my head. And yeah. I was, I'd had garlic prawns, smoked a pipe. And then was vomiting, and I was like, oh, it's the garlic prawns. Like, yeah, didn't yeah, sit well with my yeah, stomach. Yeah. The next day, I remember sitting in somebody's garage, everybody's smoking, and I'd just done a pregnancy test like an hour beforehand, and it had been positive, and they're like passing around to me, I'm like, I can't. And that was God, I'm uh. telling you. Because I was sitting there, like, there's literally smoke all around me, and I'm like, no, I can't do it. And I actually, and I don't even actually think anybody knows this, I did it, um, I think, once or twice after that, um, secretly, even from my ex, my ex wouldn't even know this, um, and it was because I, it was that hurt was still there. I had a baby growing inside me, but I, yeah. I was still the same person. Yeah, there yeah. was nothing yeah, going true. on, you know. So I had um, Shay. There was so much, man. Like, cause you now try being pregnant. Yeah, like imagine. getting off it, and now you're still with somebody that's stealing, cooking, yeah. and whether he admits it or not, cheating. Yeah. So you've yeah. got everything happening. And this world, um, you know, encompasses everything, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, there's, you know, the sexual aspect and the moral, you know, aspect and, and it, you know, the DV, there's, you know, all kinds of, you know, stealing and yeah. dealing and you know, lying and deception. and the it's lie. A lot. It's the yeah. lie. Yeah. It is compulsive yeah. without a shadow of that, even if you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And see, the thing for me, Andrea, was in my head, Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong here, this is how I thought, right? Um, you can't OD on ice, right? The way that I was doing it, you can't OD on ice. Everything that comes with ice is what kills you. Like, the ice yeah. will actually kill you from the inside yeah, out. Absolutely. But, like, the amount of people that get, that get killed from DV, that get killed from car accidents, that yeah. get killed from, like, so many horrific things from ice. Like, it's just not an ice dirt yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's right. this or this. That's right. It literally is. Let me tell you about an experience that I had right once. Um, I was four days on the gear and, and I'm sitting there and my heart starts to, uh, you know, come up here and I'm and my heart's pounding. And I mean, just to give you an idea, five, day, five um, years clean, I'm still having, you know, yeah. heart issues. But um, it was, I was sitting there and this thing started happening and I'm thinking I'm going to have a heart attack and my, my heart's pounding, you know. And, and 
people do have heart attacks. And you're hot because and you feel like it's just it's Your too heart far. pumps too too much, too yeah. quick, and, and your body sometimes doesn't cope with it. So people do, I've, I had um, a friend die from a heart attack in yeah. December from it. Um, so, but he's classified as he had a heart attack. And That's died, what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's all these things like, yeah. oh, you're... you're Organs are failing. Yeah, your kidneys, oh, your yeah, organs yeah, are yeah, failed. Yeah, Sorry, right. like that's there wasn't enough ice in your system yeah, to yeah, actually right. kill you. Yeah, yeah. Like such BS. Honestly, in my opinion, such BS yeah, now. You're right. Yeah, absolutely right. And um, you know, I just can't fathom to imagine. I know what it was like. Um, you know, trying to get clean and crying for the whole first year of yeah. that recovery, um, and thinking, you know, I'm going to do myself in. I couldn't cope. Yeah. I can't even imagine to think what it was like for you. Um, with a child and um, and a partner that was still cooking there, and you 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 know you were diligent and didn't yeah pick up again. I mean, wow. <laughs> oh well, I did after she was born. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. definitely did. Yeah. Um, <sighs> what were you thinking? Like, I okay, so the whole breast milk thing happened. Sounds yeah. funny, but it kept me clean for about a month. Yeah. Um, and then. It's so sad because there's normal issues that go on with pregnancy and birth anyway. So then I got mastitis. Then I couldn't breastfeed. So then I felt like a failure because she was my life. And that was the reason I'd gotten clean. Yeah. So then I got formula. And then it was a week or two and then I was like, I'm going to have a cone. Like, I'm super stressed. I'm like, I'm 18, 19. I've got a baby. I can't have my family come over and help because old mates here still getting on it. And yeah. I have people rolling in and out. So... I gotta kind of do this by myself. Yeah. And yeah, I remember it. I actually only told this story to my sister a couple of months ago and she had a bit of a freak out. But I'll tell you, this is what catalysted me to moving and it still kept rolling after that. But I'd had a cone, it was the first time I'd had one in more than nine months. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, that's a lie. But like, I, I don't know how long, I can't remember back then. Yeah. But um, I remember having it and I got a knock on the door. And it was the only time this ever happened to us, but we were actually being run in on. Mm. And my daughter is a month old or five weeks old. I just had a cone. My brain is not working. I'm super gullible. Mm. They're like, hey, the next door neighbor's gotten beaten up. Like, can we talk to you, Ra? He's dressed in cop gear. Mm. Like, not the actual cop gear, but like belt, yeah. walkie talkie, the whole nine yards. Comes in my five week old daughter and my ex end up getting a gun held to their head. Oh, and after that, like, God was there with me that day because he tried to tase my friend, the taser didn't work. He <laughs> went to, like, he's like, count it down, like, in 30 seconds you're going to die. 30, 29, 28, I, I, all I remember is my ex wouldn't give me my daughter. And, like, I see now that it was a good thing, but at the time I was super furious. Dropped to my knees and I just remember, I didn't, like, pray and done anything in ages and I was just like, Jesus help me, Jesus help me, Jesus help me, like, over and over and over again. I don't know how it worked out that my ex was like, I know him, um, you know, walk out the front, let's walk out the front row, like, and it's like he's going to shoot... And in that world, like when there's kids involved, you're not allowed to do that. Like yeah. it's it's a rule, yeah, whatever, right. you know. Yeah. And so his mate comes in, he's like, you're not allowed to do this. They come out, his mate leaves and bows on him. And he's still going, no, I'm, no, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do it. Ugh. And so I don't know how it happened. We walked out the front. We, I'm yelling out the front. Nobody's helping. Um, there's zip ties out, like ready for, like, for them to take him away and kill him. Stuff. Anyways, long story short, that I was like, Esther, I still didn't want to leave yeah. because I didn't. Like, I just had a baby to this man. Like, I'm not leaving after getting clean yeah. and waiting for him to get clean. I'm not leaving. You can all jam it if you actually think I'm going to do this. Yeah. That happened. And I didn't actually tell anybody that, but I was like, I can't. Like, I can't do that. It's actually unsafe for us to be here. Yeah. And God made it so that I was always good with money. And God made it so. It sounds crazy, but I do believe it that somehow weeks of rent got mixed up or I don't know how it happened because I had a, a thing that came out like every week like it wasn't even my money like yeah. I had to pretend I wasn't partnered so I could get Centrelink and all the rest of it you know because I yeah I, I know but <laughs> it's it's just I feel like it God sorted that yeah. yeah it really does it gets so messy yeah. and and it was it was a um a hostile situation because I didn't know how to provide for my child yeah without like doing things that were illegal and yeah. that were, you know, yeah. like, and as much as it might have been on a small scale, it's not yeah. at all. Yeah. It's still. Stealing is stealing, yeah. lying is lying. Uh, it doesn't matter how big, you yeah. know, and, and doing, you know, things that are immoral or crime is, is you know, it's still, whether it, it doesn't matter how big it is. That's it's exactly right. Illegal. But it's how yeah. what your brain yeah. goes through at the That's time. Right. Like, oh, it's not as bad. It's not like I'm doing yeah. a run in. Oh, like, yeah, you know? that. Yeah. 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 And it's like that, that would have yeah. been like a second yeah. away if I didn't have a child anyway. Yeah. So I moved in with my sister. Um, Tried to get it clean, but I was heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. And so I might not have been doing it every day, yeah. but at every chance I could get with getting away with it, I would. Yeah. Um, yeah, and basically what happened then is 
it went a year on. My daughter was about a year old, a little bit less. Yeah. He said, I'm going to get clean, come live with me, let's do it again, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually probably when it got the worst. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh yeah. It always gets worse when you relapse. Yeah. Every time you relapse, you end up right back to where you, where you started. Super you know, bad. Started. And at this stage, oh. everything was amazing, Andrea. Yeah. Like, I yeah. opened my cupboards and there was every sort of drug possible. And this wasn't like back then. It's like, fine. And I had a job and, oh, it was just <laughs> you amazing. You up in the world. <laughs> Drugs at your fingertips. <laughs> so bad. Oh, dear. It went horrific. So I basically went crazy again until I fell pregnant with my second child. Yeah. And then that night, I was like... I found out again off my head and I was like just wrecked. Yeah. I was like, I cannot believe that I'm here again yeah. doing this again. It was like deja vu. Yeah. And yeah. I lost I lost it everyone. I kicked everyone out of my house, kicked him out of my house, dipped out and I was like, I can't do this. I need a new house, a fresh start. I need that. And I actually did do um really well with that pregnancy. I followed through with it and obviously um yeah, and he, that's when another DV, the DV was hectic because he was actually coming off it at this stage. Yeah. Um, not fully, but not every day. I wasn't, yeah. this is my house, I pay the rent, I'm on here, you don't cook, you don't rah rah. Like I put my foot down because I was done. Like I, done, I, had, done. I had enough, you know. And so it basically took me till a few years ago where God gave him a chance. He got caught with a lot of stuff, a yeah. lot. And, um, they threw a lot of stuff out in court. Like it didn't didn't make sense how it happened. Well, I had yeah. a lot of people praying for him that yeah, day. Yeah. And um, he came home that day and he smashed the pipe, he smashed the bong and he got clean. Like until he got a probation, we relapsed a bit on weed. Um, he actually got clean before me. Wow. How crazy is wow. that? So because he was, I hadn't dealt with any of the stuff that he had done to me yeah. and stuff like that. So he had to be clean. Yeah. I didn't have to be clean. Like, you did this to me for years. Yeah. Now, every couple of weeks, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hang out with my friends. Yeah, yeah. So, I was, I was like, I was there, but I wasn't there. So, it took yeah. me, the very last time I did it, I remember, there was two last times I did it. Second last time, I went up to a girlfriend for the weekend. I had it, and it was horrific. While we were out clubbing, it was fine. I went home, and at this stage, I was pressing it, like, I was starting to press into God. So, the stuff I saw... Yeah, cool like yeah, I remember yeah. it vividly yeah. and I said God if you'll help me if you'll help me like he's not even doing it anymore I can't use him as an excuse yeah yeah that's so, right <laughs> to me I was like if you if you help me like I like I'll be forever grateful kind of thing you can't bargain with God but I obviously did yeah and yeah I did it one more time after that and I was clean ever since awesome so that's yeah amazing but just for the women out there really quickly with the kids thing yeah I literally in the last week um and like it I have I had another abortion after my second daughter, so I've had two abortions and two children, so I had to deal with that. And then I've also, my seven-year-old is the one that had a lot. In the first few years, they had the formative years. She yeah. had so much stuff go into her that I'm still working with God's help to get it out yeah. and break yeah. stuff that was over her. Because you imagine being in the womb, right, and going, I don't know if I can keep you or not, I don't know if I can keep you or not for months, yeah. like months, you know. So to me, for the mums out there, even if you think that it's not actually affecting them now, yeah. she's seven now, yeah. and the stuff that came out of her the other day because it was self rejection, yeah. which actually stemmed from the womb. Yeah. So she started to say, "I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I don't want to live," and I was like, "I like that's nothing that you've ever said or, or never in, her, right? in, in a billion years, and it mm -hmm. actually has come from all of that. Her dad and I split up a year ago, and now all these things are coming to the surface because she didn't have those first few years of like, oh my gosh." Let's dote and love and protect you and put you in a bubble and you're everything. Yeah, yeah. She bore the brunt of it, you know? Yeah, so yeah. even if you don't think that right now it's affecting them, like you're, I was the mum that was like, no, she's in a separate room, she's asleep. Yeah. Now I'll do it. When, yeah. You're still awake the next morning or five days later, you think your kid doesn't know. Yeah. You think that, like, while you're holding her and you're falling asleep and the nurse is walking in to help you when she's like two months old, that they don't know. Like, there, there are things that go over and over again. So please come from the other side and know that going back into that relationship doesn't help. Yeah. And your child, you, I'm not being mean, but you will have to deal with it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I have to, to deal with it now. And it will be a trigger. Yeah. So rather deal with it now and deal with the issues. Because you're going to have to come back yeah. and deal with that initial issue to start with anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. it's the, it's the, I mean, you've really poured your heart out and you shared honesty. From, from your experience and you know it, I was really surprised um, a few weeks back that I was told that um, 
in Queensland, they've hired another 400 um, child safety workers yeah. to um, to look after another 486 unborn meth babies. Um, so babies that are um, you know affected by ice and uh, you know given away or taken off families um, because of ice. Yeah. You know, and that breaks my heart. You know, um, if you see some of these babies that. Um, you know, uh, born with, uh, I mean, meth affects the central nervous system, you know, and they're born with lots of issues. They're starting out at a lower, issues. like, yeah. yeah. It's just heartbreaking, you know, to, um, to, to give them that start in life. But um, yeah, I was just blown away by that. And I'm thinking, man, Australia, we have a problem. Well, if you think about it, it was eight years ago. And I remember vividly in my living room getting really mad. And that this is like somebody that was raised wrong, well, this and that, whatever. Like I had things like so imagine people that haven't had been able to be blessed with that upbringing or whatever. Yeah. Like there was lots of bad stuff, but there was good stuff yeah. too. And I remember walking out of my house because I was like, there was she was at least seven or eight months pregnant, and she was smoking in my living room. Like she was whatever, and I was like, I can't, I can't actually physically watch that. I know I can't stop it because it'll cause way too much of a ruckus. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh, I, <laughs> Yeah. Heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. Um, you know, so our message um, out there when we do workshops, forums, or we work with families um, or people in addic addiction is, I mean, our message is not even once. It's really yeah. clear. It's on our t-shirts. Um, not even once to ice because it's not worth the consequence of, of the price you're going to pay. You know, and uh, I know that um, you know the weight stuff and and dealing with your daughters. Um, um, you know issues around this um, due to the impact of ice addiction yeah. um, you know other people I mean I have ki kidney issues yeah. and in you know, a heart and other people have other issues you know yeah, um, gallbladder issues psychological stuff I had anxiety for so long it's yeah. only God yeah because everybody wanted me to put on me to be put on Xanax Valium everything under the sun like the anxiety the med like ooh. yeah it takes a long time to repair yeah. that in the body and um, you know the truth is you know your body should be able to repair itself because you've damaged it so That's much exactly with chemicals right. um, it takes an extra long time and uh, um, we um, at AIC when people come to us for help um, apart from putting them on a tripod system of support um, which in a minute I'll explain we encourage them to take uh, bio greens and yeah. uh, double strength krill oil now that helps support the brain um, and to replenish the body as well um, and to take some of those um, like like the cool what are they called? Yeah, um, the probiotics. Probiotics, yeah. everyone. Not That's exactly cool, what I'm yeah, doing probably. right now. Like, And this is three years later. Yeah, it I still... Helps yeah. your gut, um, you know, absorb the, the greens and the viral um, and the yeah. pure oil to repair the neurological pathways in the brain. Um, so, and then we, yeah, we, we help them place them in a um, tripod system of support. And that's how I recovered, Esther, and I know that you did as well. Yeah, um, you know, we had somebody by our side, you know, that um, really kicked our butt and went, yeah. no, you don't want to die today, die yeah. tomorrow, today we're going to do yeah, this, yes. you know, you're going to do this, yeah. we're gonna, I'm going to do it with you, yeah. I'm going to help you, we're going to do it together. We're going to help you get a house, yeah. we're going to help you do this, yeah. we're going to have some sort of faith oh, in you. I'll never like forget. I see you inside there. I was sitting outside a bank once, so I had made such a mess out of my, my, my finances, you know, I smoked three houses, a Mercedes, uh, everything I owned, and I had like... $75,000 worth of credit card debt and I'm thinking yeah. I can't face this I can't face all of this you know and I'm sitting out there um, and my, my buddy you know that was going no 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 we can deal with this I've run, uh, let's ring the bank and we have to go there and I'm like I don't want to go there I'm so I'm going to be able to pay this and, and he drags me there and he sits there and explains to the lady um, and this is what's happened and so they gave me this grace period that was amazing and um, they helped me nice. work through it and um, I walked outside and um, I couldn't have done it without him yeah. you know I just wanted to run and yeah. I didn't know how I was going to face it because my brain wasn't able to process yeah. that and my emotions were like skyrocket and you know th that uh, depression and no yeah. dopamine and you know it was all too much yeah. you know and that's you find people um you know do three months of rehab and then they think they're fixed and they that's go exactly out in the world right. and then they got to face all of this and they go ah and by themselves yeah that yeah. that is yeah. where i believe that what arc does is perfect yeah because it is it's, it, Everything that you've said there epitomizes exactly how I feel inside because yeah. even even yeah just today I had a refresher again for a minute. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, you know what to do yeah. Yet your body can't actually function yeah. in a way to do it in a normal way like you have to like 
just some of the things like reiterating things and like this is right, right? Like this is whatever, like yeah. you know, just over and over. And it's why like it it shocked me again because I was like, wow, like that was you remembered, yeah, you remembered, and yeah, just to have that person there to hold your hand and be your brain while they can't. That's be, it. Yeah, their you don't have to fix them, no. save them, no. anything. You know, just Help need them. somebody. Yeah. yeah, and and slowly, slowly, you know, you recover. So the tripod system of supports look, looks like a buddy. Yeah. So a support person, somebody that will be there every day on text, to say, how you doing? What, 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 you know, what are we doing today? Have you been to the doctors? Have you gone yeah, to Centrelink? Exactly. Have you, have you been to the bank? They're calling again. Yeah. Um, let me help you take you there. You might yeah. not have a car or anything left. Have you got a, a pillow to put your head on tonight? Yeah. You know, little things like that. Did you eat today? You know, because that's not working. No. So to be that brain um, and to the second part of that tripod is group therapy, whether that is. NA, Narcotic, Narcotics Anonymous, AA, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, or CMA, Crystal Meth Anonymous, or a church. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, CMA, oh. yeah, I'm part of CMA, um, and they have several um, branches around. That's, that's cool, because um, I feel like that's pretty, like, it's specific. Targeted. Yeah, yeah. Crystal Meth Anonymous um, here on the Gold Coast oh, is run cool. from Surface Paradise in uh, St. John's um, Church in Surface Paradise, um, oh, cool. in the Crisis Centre there. Uh, they have a Christian Meth Anonymous on a Thursday night at 7 o'clock and that's um, yeah, pretty awesome, you know, it, it, what it is, it's a group of people uh, without judgement and, and no condemnation that, um, that can love you back to life, yeah. yeah, where you can share openly, so whether that is a group therapy or a church, it doesn't really matter, but so, uh, you know, people can come around you and accept you and love you and, and that's what happened with me, Esther, and, and, and with you as well, so you have your buddy, your group therapy and an AOD counsellor, yeah. so drug and alcohol counsellor. Um, you know, that's how I did recovery. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about detox. I didn't know where to do, where to go. I was so confused, you yeah. know. Um, and then rehab, it, to me, it was like, oh, I'm not going to jail. Yeah. You're going to lock me up for 12 months. I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah. But I don't, now I know that rehab's very different. And I go, oh, I wish I would have gone to rehab. Yeah. Because I did it the hard way. And you string it out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. I did it the hard way. Yeah. I would hide it under my sheets yeah. and cry myself for, instead of having you know the proper uh, so treatments and you. work through so that things too. with people you yeah. know with somebody that was trained to help me yeah. um, look into things and say hey this is what it really this um, is the looks root like. cause this is yeah, the yeah yeah and let's unpack that and yeah. you know, in a safe environment like that but I was on my own you yeah. know so um, it was harder work you know yeah. and a lot of people trying to do it on their own you know they and it takes a toll on you when you do oh, it by yeah. yourself like yeah even people that do do that number one at a way higher chance of relapsing that's right and that's right. number two it actually physically takes a, a mental and a physical toll on you when you're doing it by yourself because you're going well I've just done all this why, why don't I just go backwards it was yeah. all by myself anyway or I can't go backwards because I've come too far yeah um, you know and I can't I can't deal with this so you know suicide looks really good yeah um, you know yeah. because your brain's not working properly you know the suicide rates have risen dramatically yeah. in Australia and um, I'll just check how we're going for time, please. Time. Five minutes past eight. Ah, okay, we're five minutes past eight, so we're not going to stay too much longer. But um, we do want to open up for questions. If anybody's got questions, we do um, urge you to ask them now, or you can send them through later. But um, while we have Esther here, uh, if you have any questions, we want you to reach out. Um, so Esther, you know that was a um, that's a huge journey. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine what that would have been like for you. Um, we're honoured to have you in, in, as part of our team. Thanks. and um, I'm so excited to be here. For the, the work that you can do with people um, at early stages of recovery is, um, you know, you, you've been there. You've yeah. been there, you've gone through it, um, you know, come out the other end. And, you know, every day we're in recovery. You yeah. Know? And I think, Andrea, like, I know we're here, like, to educate and whatever but I just feel in my heart like to, to just say like that there is obviously hope yes. like that that bit of hope like yes we're talking about all these things you've got to go through and this and that whatever but I am better than I've ever been in my life me too me too you know what I mean like but <laughs> even before the eyes before yes. anything yes. pure and simply like hard work pays off like it, it yeah. really does having people that there's not nothing that can compare to being loved on yeah even if it's by us like we've been there I'll yeah. actually love you like yeah. Andrea will actually love you not because we have to no. not because we are getting this or that or whatever we don't get anything for no. it like we want to love on you pure and simply because we know what it's like to have been here we're now here and we're like hey 
come here with us. Yeah. Like it's so much better over yeah. here. Look like you can actually see the sunlight kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. So right. I love the fact that we've gone through all that, but we can, you can do this. Like you can legit do this. Your yeah. son, your daughter, your whatever, you are that little ray of hope. Like yeah. they may put, they'll push you away. Like push away because yeah. it's so much easier. That's what the drug does. Yeah. I'm going to push you so far away that yes. I just keep spiraling into my thing and then nobody loves me, nobody this, nobody whatever. That's right. Keep, please keep going yeah. because I wouldn't be here if people hadn't loved on me. That's right. I mean, I, I isolated in Melbourne. You yeah. know, I went, I went lock myself yeah. away, you know, and people do that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, DJ's mum, one of our presenters, you know, she kept peeking in his windows and kept writing on his mirror yeah. and on his, you know, um, on his uh, window, car window with the lipstick and yeah. I love you son and I'm, I'm, you know, she just kept pressing oh, in, you know, it was so adorable. That was my sister, yeah. Mickey, for oh, sure. She see. was like, hey, just let it, even when I went and lived with her, she wouldn't take care of my daughter because she knew that that would enable me. That's right. She would yeah. be there, she helped That's me, she'd like free rent, free this, free yeah. whatever, but yeah, honestly the love, like yeah. it will suss them out for sure yeah yeah oh, conquers all all the time and at AIC um, we are partnered up with optimal health group who provide training grief intervention training and dual diagnosis training for people in communities families um, you know that have loved ones in addiction uh, to give you some tools to be able to have some clear boundaries yeah. around yes. that love yeah because it, that it doesn't like, go into enabling that's right yes. because it can very easily oh. you know I love my son he's he's starving he's not yep. eating i'm going to give him 20 bucks to buy food uh -uh. Mm -hmm. you know yep. um, or no you cannot do that drug in this house yeah. um and that is the rule and you can sleep outside in the street if you have to i mean i've had parents on yep. the phone to me going but he's outside and he's sleeping on yep. the porch i'm like and it hurts yeah. them he's chosen like, that you yeah. know and but the very next day this son then yeah. went okay i'll go to rehab and that was like sometimes yeah. you gotta be cruel to be kind but you have you have to still love them yeah but you have to say no i love you i don't love what you're doing i don't love the drug a no. thousand percent spot on because that is the story of and i'm not being rude like to them if they watch this or whatever but that initially for a lot of like a few years was the story of my ex and his mum yeah for sure and it kept not kept us going it's no in no way her fault but like she was amazing but she just didn't know the skills so yeah definitely i think what andrea is saying is spot on having that love but having those boundaries okay um so we have a, a question here from jody mm -hmm. um how can we get you to talk with our our grandparents group uh we raise the grandchildren due yeah. to ice addiction oh my goodness um jody my heart goes out to you guys um you know and i really honor what you're doing um we would love to come out and talk to your yeah. um to your group please contact us off our webpage, www.australianantiicecampaign.org.au. There is an area there called workshops and um, just make a workshop inquiry, please, and um, connect your details, uh, put down your details and we'll, we will be in touch. So we would love to, to help out in that area. And good job. Yeah. Like yeah. seriously, because yeah. I know the system through friends and, and things, like I don't know it myself personally, but like you've just heard the stats before, like, you're in such a hard place yeah. and like just honestly from the bottom of my heart good job for like yeah. stepping in and doing that because amazing at the very least they're out of that situation yeah you know? well the kids are safe yeah. you know and but i don't want you to lose hope that's exactly um, right with, with yeah because sometimes yeah. Like, i know from my friends uh, correct me if i'm wrong it gets worse before it gets better yeah i now yeah. don't have my kids so what was the point in that i don't understand i'm going to spiral i'm not you know so sometimes it gets worse before it gets better but like my thoughts and prayers are with you for sure yeah and you're doing an awesome job and uh, yeah i'd love to we'd love to come yeah. talk there yeah. for yeah. sure awesome and we have um uh, michael alder um he lost 47 kilograms from stopping ice <laughs> like it oh, like right? you're saying hey <laughs> like how crazy is that <laughs> from stopping ice like wow yeah. uh just love them that's the key yeah that's what we just much yeah. love to you guys um we are going to wrap up the show do you have any um comments or anything that you'd like to leave our audience with tonight is there like is there anything that you could say to people out there as a, as a lasting comment is there anything that you want to leave um no i just think it's i, I and andrea actually hasn't said me say this i feel like i've said all i need to say but for me and this is being out of it for a while this presentation actually changed my world because i didn't know what was going on yeah. i didn't know all the stuff that they encompass into an hour and 15 minutes yeah absolutely shook me like i've got a lot of things like going on in my world and i knew that i had to do this pure and simply from even watching the presentation because to me i was like 
oh my gosh, yeah. this is everything that yeah. goes on in, in this little thing. A story along with it, like somebody that's gone through it. Yeah. So honestly, if you can do anything, share it, raise awareness. Like please, like even if you're going to share it like a billion times and not my story or anything like that, share everything on the yeah. page over and over yeah. again. Even if you share it because there's one of your friends that's on it and you can't actually talk to that person because they don't want to talk to you, but they might scroll down their feed and that's see this. That's right, absolutely. And we've had that happen. Yes. We've had that happen. So people have reached out and asked for help. Um, somebody shared the page with them, you yeah. know, and uh, absolutely, we want to help. So if you're a, a parent, a teacher, uh, a school out there, we do do school education from year 7 to 12. We have been into grade 6 before when the school has wanted us uh, asked us to do yeah. that. Um, we are about education and awareness, you know. I wish I'd known the things that we know now. Yeah. Um, I definitely wouldn't have gone down that track. No. And, um, uh, you know, most people that I've known along that path um, haven't recovered and haven't come out and um, we're blessed to be here yeah. you know, a very small percentage of people who embark uh, in ice addiction actually come out the other side yeah. um, it's not unscarred but we do come out yeah. and so you know we want to give back and we want to warn the next generation yeah. because now we've, we're having generational yeah. um, addiction you know that's going down from parents um, to children and it's and it's a norm We've got to stop that, Esther. Yeah. You know, it's not a norm. It's not okay to be yeah. nice. It, not even once. Yeah. It's not cool. Yeah. Um, it destroys you. So yeah. we're here to help. Um, and oh yes, of yeah, course. Nathaniel's reminding me. Nathaniel, <laughs> come on the show. Can we, can we squeeze him? We can you squeeze him in. Squeeze you on the couch. Can we? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Tell the audience out there what are you here for? Well, retro is out there. Hi, retro. Hey, and this is Nathaniel, everybody. Hey. He's our social media manager for Australian Anti-Ice Campaign. And uh, the Chariots of Light are uh, having their first and inaugural uh, show and shine for the bikes. Yes, they are. Ooh. I can't wait I for that. Going. Are you coming? Yes. Ooh, I hope I get a bike on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, hope? Come on, like, we've got to, like... <laughs> hey, I've got a jacket uh, and a helmet. And uh, gloves, and I'm just waiting for my no, bike. Thank dirt you. Dirt bikes are better, <laughs> thank you. And that's at Burley Town Tavern from 9.30 on the 18th of August. Oh, uh, was that Burley Town Tavern at 9.30? Yep. Yeah. Um, is that a Saturday? You believe so. Yes, it is a Saturday. I can see the, uh, the, uh, yes. <laughs> there's a thing up there. Um, and yeah, that's going to be amazing because there's trophies, there's going to be bands, there's going to be uh, sausage sizzles, um, the, yeah, so live yeah. entertainment, and it's going to be a great Good day. day out. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Bring the family, you know. Yeah, I'll be fun. bringing mine. Yeah, so. absolutely. Me too. Okay. And we have the Vinny CEO sleeper. Oh, oh, here you go. Have we got three? Thank you. We have two, but. Where's the other one? Like Vinny's, thank you very much. You can get your beanie um, for the CEO sleep out from our offers. They're $25. How does that look? Shall we? <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. We are we're um, sleeping we're out. in these for a reason. Yeah. Yep, we are sleeping out um, in a cardboard box. Thanks, Nathaniel. <laughs> Again, oh. I go. Again. <laughs> she says yes to everything. Yeah. That's how much she wants them to know. <laughs> and uh, well, we're sleeping out um, on Thursday the, night. On Thursday night for the Vinny CEO sleep out. The reason AARC are joining that. Um, one is to raise awareness about homelessness and help raise money for the cause. Yeah. Uh, we love what, the work that Vinnie's do, but um, also, you know, drug addiction um, leads to homelessness. Yes. You know, so many people mm. out there are homeless due to, uh, you know, their addiction. Yeah. You know, um, it's just where it takes you. You know, we, without a shadow of a doubt, isn't it yeah. a, a terrible place to be? I remember couch surfing when I first yeah. um, got clean, and I'm thinking, I've got to stop living out of my boot and out of a suitcase. Yeah. But I had, a, I had, a, I had a boot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, legit. <laughs> I just got know, back from somebody that literally is in a shelter. I was okay. blessed to have a couch at my sister's house. Isn't like, that amazing? It, it does end and in we homelessness. And family, you know, but what about, yeah. you know, when you get alienated, those people yeah. end up in the streets, you know, and that, that's very real in our society. I mean, you've got some stats in the family. One in 200 are homeless on any given night. Wow. So tonight, one that's in 200. Wow. I feel like that's a lot. I didn't think it was that much. Especially with the winter coming up, guys. Wow. Um, you know, it's cold. It's and I don't even want to get out of my bed in the morning, no. like yeah. as in I'm a winger, to get out of bed, let alone like sleeping on the concrete. And statistics show us that 402 children are sleeping out on our streets. Oh, no, that's really sad, guys. So we are um, sleeping wow. out at the St. Vinny's CEO Sleep Out. Um, and we do have a link that Nathaniel will attach to the bottom of this show and we ask you to share it. Um, dig in generously, guys. We are raising yeah. funds for the cause um, to help homelessness, or stop homelessness, not homelessness, not yeah. helpless. Help 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 <laughs> <laughs> we want to help it in a positive way. That's it. Well, so 
and that's on Thursday night, yeah? This, so this we'll week, be, oh, next week. Next Thursday, next yeah. Thursday. So next Thursday, we'll, we will be live streaming from um, directly from the CEO oh, that's sleep. cool. Yeah, sleep there. Yeah. So, and yeah. you'll see me. And you'll oh, see me. I'll be there. You won't see me because I'll be in my bed. You'll be in your bed. <laughs> hey, guess what? But I'll be live streaming from there watching you guys. I will be, I'll be wearing my onesie. Glenn so, will be there yeah, and Michelle. And Michelle as well. Yeah. So awesome. At least we have some friends to sleep out with. Yeah. In a bar. Sorry, I have children. I need to take care of. Will you be guys, thinking about us? Yes. While I drink my hot chocolate in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're blessed. We are yeah. blessed, guys. Very so blessed. honestly, every dollar counts you know two dollars five dollars um to the cause um please donate on the link below yeah. and um help us raise funds and awareness of our homelessness um i'd like to say a very special thank you to esther thank you thank Esther, you. so much for i feel like i'm sitting on top of you right now <laughs> i like Sorry. it it's okay. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing your heart and um and and your journey with everybody out there and um and for being part of what we do thanks because for having me it really genuinely like it makes me really happy to be a part of it. I love it. We cherish you and um, and all of our educators and presenters and our team. We're a family here at AARC. And again, if you need help, please contact us. Our number is 0756656063. Family support number is 0481 or you can reach us on our website, www.australianantiicecampaign.com. She's that hippo. <laughs> <laughs> I am the hippo. <laughs> and this is you today, guys. Not even, even once. once. Can you do that? Ready? What is it? Not, Not even, even once. once. Good night. Good night. Yeah. You're gonna have to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, that'll be the after bloopers. <laughs>